Hi, gang. It's Patrick. And Adam. Coming up on today's episode, we announce the title of our new questions and answers segment, and we celebrate Adam Marianne Hummel's birthday. We talk about the latest Disney news and discuss ways to enhance your special celebrations in Walt Disney World. As always, we close out the show with some quick D. All that and more on today's episode of Gays Do the D. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Yo, 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 Adam. <laughs> oh, hello, Patrick. I went with the more classical way of greeting someone. <laughs> I'm trying out, you know how I like gangster rap? Yeah. Oh. I'm just trying out some new things lately. When aren't you listening to, ga- I think it's gangsta it's, rap, it's, isn't it? It's G-A-Y-N-S-T-A. We are gangsta. too white. We are too white to be talking about this. What's your rap name? Uh, Ahama Tubbs. I like it. Yep. Mm-hmm. What's your rap name? Uh, P. Kizzle. <laughs> Ahama Tubbs and P. Kizzle? <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you think that we need, <laughs> we need to introduce ourselves that way from now on? Absolutely. I think we need to get a slot in the Eat to the Beat concert series <laughs> at Epcot. So we'll be right after Starship. <laughs> Correct. And right before Hanson. <laughs> right before Hanson. Check us out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Adam, I want to wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. Now that you're the owner of a new dog. Word to your mother. Word Speaking to your mother. Speaking of gangster rap, is it's that gangsta? I don't think so. It's, it's less gangsta, more hipster. Okay. Yeah. What if I say it like, hey, word to your mother, like a real gangster from Like an the old-timey yeah. gangster. Yeah. <laughs> word to your mother. Where's your Tommy <laughs> gun? <laughs> Speaking of, Tommy guns, happy Mother's Day? Oh, Is that how the segue I don't went? think so, but nope. happy Mother's Day to you, too. Thank you so much. How did you celebrate? Um, I didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't, frankly. No, because it's tomorrow. Yeah, well, we're recording on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And yep. I'm going to go to my parents' house after the show. Nice. For some din-din. Nice. Bring some flowers, maybe. Nice. And steal some of their wine. So it's Mother's Day, but you get a free dinner yeah. and all of the wine. Yeah. And in exchange for that, you bring flowers to Patricia? Yes. It's more of a you're welcome, mom. <laughs> For being such a golden boy son. That's absolutely correct. Oh, so nice. What about you? Your mom's in town today, isn't she's she? She's coming into town. We're going to eat a lot, and she's going to meet Penny, my dog Penny, for the first Aww. time. Her granddaughter, <laughs> grandpotter, potter. Oh. Um, yeah. And we're going to go hang out at my aunt's house. That sounds delightful. Yes. Are you going somewhere special to eat? No, we're doing it all on our own. In fact, I was running around like a crazy man last night getting all of these deli items. Oh, my goodness. For a giant feast. Are you and Matthew making that delightful salad that you like to make? That's a hard pass on that one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm processing what salad. You always bring, when we have dinner parties, you bring oh, that, that lovely salad. That would have been smart. I know we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> always consult me before you do anything. Oh, yeah. I should have done that. Yeah. All right. Next well, time. Sorry. Next Mother's Day. Sorry, Adam's mother. <laughs> but we want to wish everyone out there, mothers and fathers who are also mothers and aunts who are also mothers and uncles who are also mothers, anyone who's a mother, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mom's Day. Let's talk about some other holidays, Adam. Okay. There's some anniversaries coming up. Okay, yeah? Yeah, I'd like to start off with my favorite of the list, your birthday. (laughs) The anniversary (laughs) of you entering the world with some sass. Oh, my. And no class. That's right. Happy birthday, Adam. Your birthday's on the 16th. It is, May 16th. I want to do a call out to all of our Gays Do The D listeners. Harass Adam all week long (laughs) with birthday messages. Mm. He deserves it. Oh. I can't believe he's lived this long. I know. It's shocking, isn't it? It's a real surprise to everybody (laughs) and a treat to Gays Do The D. Oh, yeah. You're welcome, Gays Do The D. (laughs) And you're welcome, Patrick. Well, thank you so much. (laughs) Are you going to do anything fun for your birthday? I... The that's, actual, that's a hard pass again, isn't it? The actual night of my birthday, I'm getting a haircut. Oh, good. <laughs> and then on Saturday, the mm-hmm. 18th, I'm having a little get-together. Sensible. Mm-hmm. Didn't see my invitation anywhere. That's fine. Oh, you that's got fun. an invitation. I got an invitation. You have a show to do, though. I do have a show. Yeah. I, I am thinking of quitting. Okay. The smart. production. Yeah. Can your understudy go on that night? Yes. I will be replaced by a mop <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes a sock puppet. And no one would know the difference. I'm sure of it. That mop is so much fatter than you are. <laughs> 
wow, that's a really good compliment. I know. And a weird one. I know. I'm into it. Okay. I'm into it. <laughs> no, happy birthday. Sorry, I can't be there on your birthday oh, party. Oh, that's fine. That's life. But we're having dinner the next week. We are. Yeah. We have a very special present for you. <gasps> I wasn't supposed to tell you that sh- Oh. I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> r- oh, remove that word. <laughs> I'll bleep it out. I love using the bleep. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I do this. It was a very happy birthday bleep to you. Yes, thank you. Editing will be fun. Thank you. Let's move on to some lesser fun anniversaries. Oh, okay. Yeah. But still delightful, just not your birthday, which mm-hmm. is the most exciting holiday of all. Truth. The, the movie Dinosaur, which the ride Dinosaur is yes. based off of, or at yes. least the overlay for it, yeah. is turning 19 years old. What? I know. That's crazy. It was um, released on May 19th, 2000. Oh, my gosh. How crazy is that? I haven't seen Dinosaur. Did you see Dinosaur? I did. Okay. I did. Oh, it's a movie with dinosaurs. You know, I gotta say, aside from the dinosaur sequence in Fantasia, <laughs> Disney hasn't really gotten dinosaurs right in movies yet, have they? Because there was the good no. dinosaur, too, which kind of just flopped. Which didn't live up to the title. Yeah. Is there yeah. a Disney movie, listeners, that you know of that has dinosaurs in it that's just excellent? I love that sequence from Fantasia. It is scary. It's mm-hmm. scary. But mm-hmm. other than that, what movies has Disney done where dinosaurs are, like, well, well done and successful and... And dinorific. And dinorific. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Let us know, listeners. Yeah, thank you so much. Moving on, the movie Pollyanna is turning 59 years old. Wow. Starring Haley Mills, a young Haley, Haley Mills. Mills. Uh, that was released on May 19th, 1960. Now, this was pre Miss Bliss from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> Very pre. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, remember that? Yes, I do. That was when they were in junior high, when That's they right. all lived not in California. Where were they? I don't know. I feel like they were in like Michigan or something weird. Oh. And then the whole class moved <laughs> to California, including Mr. Belding. Well, you know, they could wear shorter shorts and skirts when they moved to California. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, so... And Kelly Kapowski was there, so... Kelly Kapowski. So she was not in the original iteration of the show? She Kelly? was not. She and Mario Lopez... Um, A.C. Slater. Yeah. We're not in the Ridge. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if Jesse Spano was either. I know it was Zach. Lisa? Lisa was in it. Yeah. And then two other randoms. Yeah, I remember I remember a brunette who didn't make the cut to California. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And she got left behind in Michigan. That's exactly right. And then Screech was there as well. Oh, sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Miss Bliss was left behind. Oh. They packed up Mr. Belding. Yeah. And headed west so this is a saved by the bell podcast it is now (laughs) i could talk about saved by the bell for a long time we have a lot to chat about i actually watch it on the airplane sometimes oh sure when there's like just a half hour left of the flight i'm like oh an episode of saved by the bell will get me through this 30 minutes (laughs) and a bottle of wine well, I woke up in the morning and I, the morning. <laughs> I really know the theme song. I, it sounds like it. It sounds like it's it. It's all right because I'm saved by the bell. bell. Oh, yeah. See, that's our, we're, eat to the beat. <laughs> eat to the beat. Well, happy anniversary, Pollyanna and Dinosaur and Adam. Thank you. I'm right in the middle of those two. <laughs> not quite 19, not quite, what is it, 49? 59. 59. So you're closer to Pollyanna than you are to Dinosaur. Rude. And, and I don't mean the actual dinosaurs, because you're closer to those. <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> that was ruder. <laughs> you burnt. <laughs> Moving on, Adam, we've got a couple of trip announcements to talk about, don't we? We do. So yours is first, I believe, in June? Yes, I'm going to Disneyland in June in about 30 days. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so exciting. Yeah. I was going to say, did you get your fast passes? But clearly not, because you're going to Disneyland. That's right. For Star Wars. I do have my Max Pass purchased already, though. Oh, of course. So each day when I walk into the park, I'll be able to make my Fast Pass purchases at that time. What's your time window to go into Galaxy's Edge? So I go in my second day there. Okay. And I'm there from 8 a.m. until noon. Fun. Yeah. That's a nice window. I think so. It won't be too hot. Yeah. Might be a little cold. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. I'm excited to hear all about it. Yeah. You're going to be a fresh reporter for Mm. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Yes. And then the two of us have a trip coming up along with Matthew, question mark? Matthew's coming. Matthew's coming as well. On August 15th, you'll be there. I'll be there on the 16th. Yes. And we're going for Gay Days Orlando in the yes. parks. Yes, we are. I have to say, I announced this on my Instagram yesterday, mm-hmm. and boy, did I get some feedback. Oh, yeah. Because I forgot that it is not the only Gay Days 
happening right. in Orlando right. and in the parks. Right. In June, in fact, for Pride Month, there's another event, and I think this is the older of the two events, and it's called One Magical Weekend. Mm-hmm. And that's the one that's been around for a while. And so I think a lot of our listeners are going for that weekend. And then we're going for Gay Days Orlando, which I think is a, is a newer of the two. It's okay. a new group that's sort of getting this off of its feet. Okay. So we will have a lot to talk about because I think some of our listeners will be reporting back to us about how their experience was in one magical weekend. And then we, of course, will report back for gay days. Oh, I see. The dueling gays. It's very West Side Story. It is very West Side Story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In my mind, I picture one magical weekend being for anyone 30 and under. (laughs) Yeah. And gay days is like 30 and over. Okay. So gay days is very... Very pool party. Oh, no, no. No. One Magical Weekend's very pool party. Yes. And, and we're days. more an, a sensible rap. And like some culottes mm-hmm. and a Werther's original tucked into our pocket. Yeah. That's gay days. Maybe some knitting. Prove us wrong, gay days. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. It might get wild. It might get wild. Speaking of, if you are going to be there for gay days, let us know. We, we really want to do a meetup while we're in the parks. Yes. We would love to schedule some kind of informal meetup. Although, as we said in last week's episode, Patrick will be in a gown, so he will be formal. A full gown. The rest of us will be informal. I can only be found at high tea at the Grand Floridian in a full Downton Abbey gown. (laughs) That's how I celebrate being gay. Now all I can do is picture you doing a Maggie Smith impression and please, (laughs) please bring it out for gay days. I certainly will. Thank you. Citrus tea, what on earth is that? (laughs) Lastly... Before we get into the news, yes, we have a winner of our new questions and answers segment, don't we? We certainly do, Patrick. We have a winner. We do. I'm going to announce it right now. Was there a great debate on Instagram? There was not a debate. Okay. But there were entries. Oh. And we do have a winner. All right. I like some entries. The new name of Mm -hmm. our question and answer segment featured on last week's episode. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Is. Yeah. Questions and Peter Pansers. Yay! With Adam and Patrick. I like that one. Yes. It rolls off the tongue a little bit better. So we should use this opportunity to remind people that if you have any questions about Disney or Disney trips or about us in general. Yeah, it actually doesn't have to be Disney related. If you just want to get to know us a little more. Yeah, yeah. hypothetical questions yeah. about Disney. Mm-hmm. What if this happened? Feel free to send them to us. You can contact us on social media at GDTD Podcast. Or, of course, you can email us at info at gazedothed.com. Patrick. Yas, Adam. This just in. (gasps) It's time for the news. Ooh, exciting. Soon, Disney will be offering guests staying at the Disney World Resorts an upgraded Magic Band experience at a discounted price. As per usual, guests will be able to order a variety of solid color Magic Bands free of cost on the My Disney Experience website, but soon, more than 30 character and ride-themed Magic Bands will be offered for around $10 per band. It's about time. (laughs) I know. I already have every color of the other ones. (laughs) Also, I just feel like this should have happened years ago. Doesn't it seem like it? I mean... It seems real simple to have done this a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the technology behind it, but... How is it different? I don't know how it's different than just the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm excited for it because it'll be fun to have more options when you're staying at a resort. For sure. Last time I was there, I bought the Donald Duck Magic Band, and I love it so much. You're obsessed with Donald now. I can't say that I'm not. I can't say that I'm not. Fatal attraction. Listen, he was with me on the race. (laughs) It was all I needed to get through. Uh Uh-huh. So bands can be shipped to any U.S. address if ordered 11 or more days ahead of time and can be personalized with your name on it. Otherwise, your magic band will be waiting for you at your resort if you do not meet that 11 or more day window. No date has been set yet for the new offering, and as of this morning, it was still not available, so keep checking back. A fun fact, magic bands are only five years old. No. Yeah, they came out in 2014, 2015 time period. So they were new when I took my first adult trip to Disney World. Mm-hmm. Then. Same here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that crazy to think about? Yes. It was the new, because they still had the ticket experience sure. for the Fast Passes. Sure. And then they just sort of flipped the switch to Magic Bands. Wow. Crazy Town. Yeah. Which Magic Band are you hoping to get 
I would really love like a classic Mickey magic band. Yeah. I mean, who knows if they're going to offer something like that, mm-hmm. but I would love a black and white steamboat Willie magic band. And I know they oh, already have that yeah, for purchase. For sure. So maybe they won't offer that as one of the resort magic bands, but maybe. You never know. They might have tiered versions of it. So sure. like basic is zero dollars and sure. then like classic ter- characters for 10 and then maybe elevated ones for 20 or more dollars. I would pay $20 for a really good signature band. What's your magic band dream? Good question. I already have Donald, as I said, so I don't need no other band. You know what I would love to see you have, though? What's that? A Cheshire Cat magic band. Yeah, I do need to make that happen. So cute. Those colors. Mm-hmm. Those colors, and though. stripes. Cute. I almost got a figment one while I was there. Oh, that's but, a good one, too. But Donald just jumped out at me. I don't know, yeah. man. That's also how you met your husband, Dan. He just jumped out at you, too. He jumped out and scared the crap out of me. Yeah, and now look at you. Yeah. Tricked. Tricked into marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, we received some additional details about the new Play Pavilion coming to Epcot. Exciting. When the announcement was made back in February, Disney stated, This new space will be devoted to playful fun and feature an innovative city that'll come to life under the dome of the unnamed pavilion previously known as Wonders of Life. The Pavilion City will be bursting with interactive experiences, your favorite Disney characters, hands-on activities, and engaging entertainment. According to WDW News Today, the yet-to-be-named Pavilion, which had previously housed Cranium Command and Body Wars, will now feature the return of Animation Academy under the guidance of Edna Mode from The Incredibles... Guests will learn how to draw Disney characters in this relocated offering that was once housed at the Magic of Disney Animation at Disney's Hollywood Studios. The pavilion will also feature an interactive game called Hotel Heist featuring Nick and Judy from Zootopia, character meet and greets for Wreck-It Ralph and Vanellope, Joy and Sadness and Baymax, an arcade as well as a play area for toddlers, and a stage in the very center of the pavilion where live performances will take place. WDW News Today noted that there are no plans to use the large show buildings for either Body Wars or Cranium Command during this initial phase. All the offerings will be held under the main dome. It is expected that the new Play Pavilion will open for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World Resort in 2021. That's very exciting. Yeah. I'm really excited for the Animation Academy. Yeah. That you, sounds super fun. You need help. I've seen you Oh, draw. my goodness. Yeah, there's no chance that I'm ever going to like do a good job at it, but it'll be fun to do. Do you think Edna Mode is going to walk around with a ruler and just like slap your wrists if you're drawing poorly? I need a good slap, so I hope yeah. so. I yeah. hope so. Are they moving all of those characters then into that building? Because right now, they're all spread out throughout Epcot, mm-hmm. and I wonder what they're going to do with those spaces now that they won't be there anymore. It seems like they're definitely moving the Disney Pixar characters into that area. Yeah. I don't know about like Mickey and Minnie, where they're going to be. Sure. Sure. But yeah, it sounds like they're going to be all contained in that new pavilion. I like all my characters trapped in one area. Yeah. That's how I like to experience them. (laughs) (laughs) Part of what makes a trip to Disney World a magical and memorable experience is the dedication Disney has to the culinary arts and on-site hospitality talent. Recently, Disney has decided to invest $1.5 million into the reimagination and relocation of Valencia College's Culinary Arts and Hospitality Program. This new downtown Orlando campus will be a shared campus with the University of Central Florida, and it will feature state-of-the-art classrooms and cutting-edge technology for its students, and it will serve as the epicenter of Valencia's Culinary Arts and Hospitality Programming. The new program will offer degree programs, certificates, and workforce training. As the program grows, Disney will continue to invest by lending its award-winning chefs to engage with the school. Very cool. That is very cool. It's reminiscent of when Walt Disney partnered with the Chenard Art Institute out in California. Sure, yeah. I think it was called the Art Institute anyway, mm-hmm. but like to for, so that the animators could learn kind of life drawing skills. Mm-hmm. And it's nice to see that that dedication to training continues today. Yeah, it makes sense to invest specifically in that area because they're going to want all that talent to come back to them as employees of mm-hmm. the parks, right? Yeah, yeah. So the campus will be open for the fall 2019 semester and it will serve the Orlando community by offering affordable education. A fun fact, Disney employs more than 16,000 cast members in its food and beverage program. 
Wow. That's crazy town. That benefits us. That benefits my tum tum. Yes. And my mouth hole. <laughs> <laughs> but not in that order. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, maybe. Have you seen the act? <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I just finished it. <laughs> Oof. Is it good? I mean, it's <laughs> well done and wow, this is completely off the rails, but. I was born to be your mama. <laughs> <laughs> I love Disney princesses. Oh, my gosh. That <laughs> freaked me out. We need to cut this now. <laughs> no, no. I am Gypsy Rose. <laughs> I heard that they were considering you for a while for the part. I was. I was. It was down to me <laughs> and Joey King. And wow. look what happened. Yeah. Well, your loss. <laughs> Not ours. <laughs> This fall, guests of Walt Disney World Resort Hotels and other select hotels will be able to take advantage of extra, extra magic hours. Clever name. For a limited time at Disney's Hollywood Studios, Disney's Animal Kingdom, and Magic Kingdom. Okay, okay, tell me more. Extra, extra magic hours, which I want to say extra, extra magic mm-hmm, hours, mm-hmm. will run daily at Disney's Hollywood Studios from September 1st through November 2nd from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. and will include Star Wars Galaxy's Edge plus Toy Story Land attractions and select other attractions. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and its experiences are subject to capacity. Wowzers. So a 6 a.m. start for this extra, extra magic hours at Hollywood Studios, that means you have to wake up at what, 4.30 or 4? That's kind of when I get up anyways. Put your face on. Yeah. Take out your curlers. (laughs) Pin up my hair for the bus ride there. Yep. And then unfurl it. Yep. As I walk through the gates. Yep. Okay. There's going to be a lot of grumpy people at 6 a.m. Yeah. Oh, man. Those crowds are going to be insane. A lot of slaps are going to (laughs) happen. Please note that on August 29th through the 31st, the park will open at 6 a.m. for all guests. There will not be extra, extra magic hours on those days. At Disney's Animal Kingdom, extra, extra magic hours <laughs> will happen daily from August 29th through November 2nd from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and will feature Pandora, the world of Avatar's attractions, and other attractions throughout the park. At Magic Kingdom, extra, extra magic hours. Is that annoying yet? Nope. Okay, great. Will happen daily from August 29th through November 2nd from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. featuring favorite attractions in Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. Extra magic hours will also continue to be available on select days at Epcot. So sorry, Epcot, you don't get extra, extra magic hours. (laughs) You just get classic extra magic hours. Well, there's not a lot there that you need extra, extra hours for right now. We'll get there, Epcot. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. Mm Mm-hmm. Extra, extra magic hours require a valid theme park admission and hotel ID. Guests without the Park Hopper option or Park Hopper Plus option must spend the day at the same park where they'd like to enjoy the extra, extra magic hours benefit. For more information, visit DisneyWorld.com. So it's interesting because they're expecting such huge crowds the first two months after the opening of Galaxy's Edge. Mm -hmm. They've expanded this extra, extra magic hours offering to Animal Kingdom and to Magic Kingdom because I'm assuming they just expect overflow, right? Like they just expect so many people to be there. For sure. For sure. I'm guessing it's all going to be on the same day then as well, right? Yeah. It sounds like it's every day from August 29th through November 2nd. Because currently regular extra magic hours are scattered. That's right. Like one park will have it one day, the next park the next day. Yeah. Interesting. I was trying to figure out why would they end on November 2nd, but it because of the wine and dine half marathon. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I might try to take advantage of this, maybe go out a day early. You should. And take advantage of the extra, extra magic hours. Thank you for saying it that way. You're very welcome. I said it a little bit more calm and collect. Proper. Mm-hmm. That was a Maggie Smith reading of it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Word on the street is that Disney's Beauty and the Beast is getting a reboot on Broadway. On Broadway. On the Broadway. I saw this on Broadway. You did? I did. I have not seen it. Patrick? What? Are you kidding me? Why would I joke about something like that, Adam? Oh, well, we're going to have to go to New York and see the reimagined version. Okay. Beauty and the Beast was the first Disney production to get a Broadway treatment through Disney Theatrical Productions in 1994. That was so long ago. Yeah, I was there. Ugh. <laughs> you were just a girl of 37. Oh, come on now. What? Thomas Schumacher, president of Disney Theatrical Productions, has been giving interviews around town teasing the possibility of a reboot for Beauty and the Beast. Nothing is official as of yet, 
as in no dates have been set and no location has been booked, but he's been quoted as saying in an interview with Paul Wanterek, we're working on a revival of it with the entire original team, but with a completely new design for every element. New dance arrangements, whole new staging ideas. It's really fun for that team to be able to dive back in. And in an interview with ABC News, he said about the show, yeah, it's happening. (laughs) So there you go, folks. He does not mince words. No, apparently not. You know, it's interesting that they're using the original team. I can't tell if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. He must have really liked, or Disney must have really liked working with them. I get that part of it. Yeah. But are they going to be able to reimagine it in such a way? Or would it be better to bring in all new people to reimagine it? I can can see it both ways. Yeah, you might run into that sort of problem where people go, well, here's how we did it last time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I would slap that person right in the face. That's called an Adam shortcut. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I wonder, because didn't they get some new treatments on the cruise line version of Beauty and the Beast? The cruise line version, which is a shortened version of the musical mm-hmm. has more of the look from the film now the the live action film that came out sure yeah and so instead of an enormous mrs potts it's sort of a a scaled down version it's a it's a yeah it's a scaled down version on a tea cart interesting and lumiere's actual size and he's brought to life by a puppeteer yeah he's more of like a, of a marionette kind of a version isn't he I think so or i think he might be yeah it's i, it's, I don't know how it works yeah it's yeah. magic it's magic yeah Disney's doing a ton with Beauty and the Beast lately. They're investing heavily. I think they were reminded of what a moneymaker it is after that live action version right. came out. Well, I'm thinking the bar in Grand Floridian is getting yes. a Beauty and the Beast treatment. Yeah. They're doing a sing along now in the parks. In Epcot, yeah. The movie was just released, a live action movie. Yeah. A new Broadway, a crazy town. Yeah. Who would you play? In the remounted musical? Yes. Cogsworth. Oh, of course you would. Yes. Of course you would. Who would you play? Oh, well, we know. Belle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've already been called in to read for Belle. Well, you have the dress for it. Yeah, we all know it's going to be LeFou. I'm p- clearly playing LeFou. You're such a LeFou. Mm-hmm. That's actually a dream role of mine to play LeFou. That'd on, be great. That'd on, be great for you. On Broadway. Yeah. Just trot the boards. Yes, why not? LeFou. Yeah. I really hope they don't go too digital with it. So many Broadway shows are relying on digital aspects instead of actual set pieces. That's a great point, And Patrick. it bugs me. Yeah, they, I understand they that. They look fine and it's cool, but it's like, no, 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 no. I need, I need some things on stage. You know what's interesting is that it often looks very flat. That's the as thing. As opposed to an actual flat, which for those <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who aren't involved in theater, a flat is like a set piece, kind of like a painted wall, essentially. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes the screens end up looking flatter than a flat. Yeah, they're not as good at doing three-dimensional painting yes. with with digital right. versus actual painting, right. which yeah. is weird. Yeah. Hmm. I'm a traditionalist. Yeah. It's the Maggie Smith coming out in me. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a through line to this episode, it's Maggie it is Smith. Dame Maggie Smith. <laughs> It's hard to believe, but we are just shy of three weeks away from the opening of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland. Oh, I didn't even think of it that way. Wow. And with the anticipation of the land's opening day, we are being spoon-fed more and more details about what guests will experience. Last week, we learned the following from a series of articles from the Orange County Register. First, we know that those that were lucky enough to snag a reservation to visit Galaxy's Edge from May 31st through June 23rd have been assigned a four-hour window to do so, we now know that Disneyland will issue colored wristbands to visitors during the reservation-only period for each of the four-hour windows. Newly admitted Galaxy's Edge visitors will mix in with those already in the land, much like the Halloween events at Disneyland. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The article goes on to state that, quote, after each four-hour window ends, Disneyland employees may turn away visitors with expired wristbands attempting to enter Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run or one of the restaurants or shops. Stragglers will be dealt with by the First Order Stormtroopers patrolling the land. You know some people are going to try to straggle just to have that experience. That is just encouraging people Uh to try to stay longer. Yeah, for sure. But to your point that you brought up, a couple of weeks ago, Patrick, they are going to enforce that four-hour window even if you are trying to get in line for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. I think that's a great idea. Second, we learned that starting June 24th, after the initial reservation period, Disneyland visitors will need to secure a, quote, boarding pass in a virtual queuing system designed to manage crowds in Galaxy's Edge. The boarding pass will be via the Disneyland app and from kiosks issuing paper passes throughout the park. 
Visitors must be inside the park to select a Galaxy's Edge boarding group using the Disneyland app and will have two hours to show up for their Galaxy's Edge boarding pass entry after receiving their push notification. There will be no time limit on how long visitors may spend in Galaxy's Edge. Early morning visitors will be able to head directly into the land without securing a pass with the virtual queuing system. A status bar in the Disneyland app will notify visitors when Galaxy's Edge is full and boarding passes are required. Late night visitors may also find that boarding passes are not required to enter the land. I don't believe that, but <laughs> we'll see. Once that park opens, I think that land's going to be full. Yeah. Disneyland plans to stop using the virtual queuing system as soon as crowds dissipate. Patrick, when are crowds going to dissipate? Uh, 2072. Correct. Third, we learned that Docking Bay 7 Food and Cargo, Ronto Roasters, and the Milk Stand will offer mobile ordering via the Disneyland smartphone app when Galaxy's Edge opens at Disneyland. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opens in Disneyland on Friday, May 31st, and in Disney's Hollywood Studios on Thursday, August 29th, 2019. That's a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot to think about. Yeah. So, you know, I'm someone who has anxiety. Yes. Especially in situations like what I imagine Galaxy's Edge will be. Yes. I can't tell if this quote unquote organized um, timing yeah. would help me with right. that because I know exactly what I'm doing, where I'm going. There's not too many people involved mm -hmm. or if it'll give me more anxiety because I only have four hours. What am I going to do with it? Where is anything? You know what I mean? The Disneyland cast member who was interviewed for the Orange County Register article, mm -hmm. who is high up in the chain, his name is currently escapes me, but he said that four hours will be plenty of time for people to experience everything that they need to in Galaxy's Edge. Okay. He also commented that it would be smart for people not to immediately run to Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run and to maybe use that first two hours to explore the land and then get in line for the ride. Sure. But they are going to try to limit the wait time for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run to two hours. Like, that would be the max it would get to. Oh. And if anything happens to the ride, should it break down or anything like that, accommodations yeah. will be made, I guess, for people to come back into the land to experience the attraction at a later time. Oh, okay. It's a lot of logistics. It's a lot. And I'm so thankful that I'm not coordinating it. Oh, man. <laughs> It's like a beautiful mind situation. You yeah. Russell Crowe and like an invisible <laughs> chalkboard. And for some reason, Jennifer Connelly is there, I guess. She should always be there. She should just always be there. Yeah, everyone needs a Connelly in their life. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, as we said earlier, we will be performing in the Eat to the Beat concert series this year. It is an honor for anyone attending. <laughs> it is Eat an honor for you. Beat. Yes. For sure. For yes. sure. So the Eat to the Beat concert series at the 2019 Epcot International Food and Wine Festival has been announced. Get right out of here. Mm -mm, I won't. Okay. We are not on the list, unfortunately. So I guess oh. we will not be performing on stage. Okay. At the Eat to the Beat concert <laughs> series. Just we, to the left. Just off to the side. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. This event runs daily from August 29th through November 19th at the American Gardens Theater in the World Showcase at Epcot. Shows are Sunday through Thursday at 5.30, 6.45, and 8 p.m. And Fridays and Saturdays at 6.30, 7.45, and 9 p.m. Here are some of the entertainers that you can see. Okay, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. Starting off, yep. the Plain White Tees. Great. From August 29th to the 31st. Fantastic. Don't they have that song, Delilah? Is that them? I don't know. Hey there, Delilah. No, is that them? I don't know. Okay. This might be a huge mistake. Oh, I think I'm thinking of the White Stripes. I don't think they would be at the Eat to the Beat concert series. <laughs> that would be a really... <laughs> I would love that. Yeah, that's why I got excited. To be frank about it. But it's not. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Sawyer Brown. Okay, he's a person. Who, who dat? Yep, I don't know. Nope, from uh, September 1st and 2nd. Okay. Everclear. Okay. The I, 18th and 19th. That sounds familiar. I think they're... Valder of mine. Mm, nope. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Postmodern Jukebox. Oh, yes. You love them. I love them. Yes. One of my favorite groups. Are they going to be there when you're there? They're not. Oh, okay. They're there in September. Boo. I know. I might have to take a trip out there well, to see not? them, though. Well, why not? Yeah. Okay, it's happening. <laughs> Sugar Ray. Okay, there's one I know. <laughs> is that Mark McGrath? It is Mark McGrath. Remember? I want to fly. Is that him? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to fly. Okay. Oh, I just want to fly? Yeah. Okay. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Baja Men. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? And other hits that they had. Hits? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sheila E. Oh, Sheila E. Yeah. Yas she Queen. plays the drums, right? Like, wasn't she Prince's protege? Is that right? No? 
No, am I thinking of someone else? She was, in fact, a percussionist. Okay, so... Is, I, is not was, is. Okay, yeah, so that's that That part's right. Good job, Sheila E. Yeah. Hanson. <gasps> Mbop. Mbop the night away. Yes. Chris Allen. Mm. Of American Idol fame. No. Okay. I was thinking of Ted Allen of <laughs> original Queer Eye fame. <laughs> He's a singer now. Yeah. Turns out... Boys to Men. Boys to Men. Now, that would be one I would actually really love seeing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was my junior high experience, yeah. was just Boys to Men. Yeah. Very figuratively okay. and, and literally oh. and musically. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Okay, fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Zoot Suit Riot. Remember that? Yes, I do. And then closing out the series is D Capella. Oh, my gosh. How fun would that be to see? Now, that one is perfection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That'll be on November 19th. De Capella in Epcot? Is there anything more Disney than that? There's nothing more Disney than that. Yeah. We might have to go. So, Patrick, I just want to rewind this for a second and clarify something. Mm -hmm. Food and Wine opens the same day as Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disney World? Oh, boy. Wow. Oh, dear. (laughs) What a mess. Well, you know what? Maybe not a mess. Maybe that's a really good idea. Do you think that it will lessen the crowds for food and wine? Or do you think that everyone who can't get into Galaxy's Edge will go to food and wine? I think so. Because they're going to be so mad, they want to get drunk. Oh, oh, this is going to be fantastic. Well, that's kind of what food and wine turns into (laughs) around 6 p.m. anyways. (laughs) Don't you think? (laughs) When you're there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're not even allowed back into food and wine. I'm drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's our group name? What are we performing as off to the left side of the stage while Boys to Men is performing on the stage? Defaced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's probably defaced. <laughs> Patrick. What's up, Adam? This Thursday, May 16th, is my birthday. True story. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Great. Was just that. That's all for this episode of Gays yep. Do the D. Yep. No, it's not. Okay. So I thought for this week's discussion topic, yeah. we could talk about fabulous, fantastic, fun. What other F words can I use? I know you're thinking of one right now that you can't say. Furry. Furry ways. To celebrate in Walt Disney World. A furry way to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you thought that we should talk about celebrating your birthday yes. as a segment on Gays Do the D. Basically, this is just you pitching ideas <laughs> to me. And then we'll just postpone the celebration until we're in Disney World together. Yeah. At which time you can lavish me yeah. with all of these celebratory events. Well, if memory serves, I told you there was going to be a firework every hour. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In my quick D answer a That's few episodes right. ago. That's right. So we know firework will be happening. Yeah, I can't believe you want more, but I, I guess. I want more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's time for a discussion. It is. Okay. A celebratory discussion. Oh. Because as I was digging into this, I mm-hmm. realized there are actually a lot of really fun ways that you can kind of plus your Disney vacation mm-hmm. if you're down there celebrating something. So many ways. So many ways. I was digging in as well, and I was like, oh my gosh, I never thought to do that. Right. But now I want to go do that today. Right. And there's really, I mean, everybody's celebrating something at Disney, right? I mean, you see everybody wearing oh, yeah. an I'm celebrating button Yeah, to the point where it's like, who isn't celebrating something? Mm-hmm. Can you say I'm celebrating nothing? I suppose you could. You sure could. Because <laughs> they have the generic one that just say, I yeah. am celebrating. Yeah. Yeah. They actually started selling those pins in the parks. Did you see that? Those Etsy pins that people have been creating for years. Disney now creates those kind of like, I'm celebrating or I'm engaged or like collecting thingamabobs, those kind of like individualized buttons. They're selling them now. I didn't know that. But I digress. Wait. So the buttons aren't free anymore? No, they are free. Oh. You can still get the I'm Celebrating buttons for free. Yeah. But there's kind of like this whole offshoot of Etsy buttons that people have been selling for years where it's kind of like more specific. Yeah. Same style of button, but it's more specific. Got it. Disney's now selling those in the shops. Of course they are. Yeah. Of course they are. Good job, Disney. Yeah. I mean, just being in the parks itself is a celebration. Absolutely. So it makes sense. And I love those celebrating buttons, to to be clear. I think that we should always celebrate every minor or major step in our lives. Don't you think? My glass is half empty, Patrick. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, that's not true. It's a very great way of looking at things. Yeah. And when you're in Disney World, of course, you should be celebrating every single moment. 100%. My glass is full of vodka. Yep. So how do you want to start out? Do you have, do you have a, a big one that you want to talk about first? I kind of tailored my list okay. to maybe some smaller ideas and then kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, you're we a grower. Really, we can, <laughs> oh, Patrick. <laughs> we can jump around and like, but I'm just going to throw out an idea. Yeah. And we can talk about it. Let's do it. And my first idea, which is not so original, yeah. is to plan one table service or signature dining experience. Just one. I like it. Just one on your vacation. Yeah. For several reasons. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is more of a momentous dining experience, right? Absolutely. But in addition, it kind of gives you a break, right? Like it gives you a chance to sit down and relax and have a conversation with someone you're there with. Sort of reboot your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really focus on some fantastic food. Absolutely. I would not one-up that, but Make it a special one, too. Right. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm thinking, go to the California Grill in the Contemporary. Oh, sure. Get yourself a nighttime reservation there. Yes. So you can watch the fireworks because it overlooks... The Magic Kingdom. Have you done that before? I haven't, and I really want to do it. Yeah, me too. I think it's a it's a really like a treat yourself kind of a day. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. What are some other table service restaurants or signature dining experiences could people take advantage of? They could do Victorian Alberts if they really wanted to go all out. And if they're a millionaire, yeah, I hear that's very pricey. Yes, it is very pricey. But treat yourself. Yes, absolutely. Wait, wait, where is that restaurant? Is that that's in Epcot? Yeah, that's in the Grand Floridian. Oh, that's right. Yes, I'm thinking of Le Cellier. Oh, sure, yeah, in Canada. A lot of people love Le Cellier. Uh huh. I haven't been there either. Another great option would be Jico. Of course, Jico. Yeah, you could do that Lion King dining package. Hundred percent. There's so many great restaurants that I haven't been to yet. Yeah, I'm not one to sit down and treat myself to a good dinner at Disney. Well, now that you're an annual pass holder, you can. That's true. Take your time. Enjoy it. Get that discount, though. Absolutely. Give me one of your suggestions. I'm going to celebrate in my room. Oh, yeah. Uh You know what I'm talking about. (laughs) I'm talking about the in-room celebrations that Disney offers. Fantastic. So if you go to DisneyWorld.DisneyFloralAndGifts.com, Disney offers a plethora of of in-room celebrations that you can have waiting for you when you get to your hotel room. That's right. It's such a good idea. They have anything from a bottle of wine to some snacks to a full-on, they'll decorate your room all-out extravaganza. It's really cool. Can you imagine walking into your room and being surprised by that? Oh my gosh. I would love that. Yes. I would also go, where's my laptop? (laughs) (laughs) Why? Because I don't trust anybody. So you're thinking that a thief came in yeah. and decorated your room and then stole your laptop. Yeah. Wouldn't that be the best way to rob someone to like also give them a surprise so they wouldn't expect it? It's a double surprise. Mm-hmm. Double surprise. Good surprise, bad surprise. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So these in-room celebrations range from $30 all the way up to $550. Holy buckets. Crazy town. For the $550 package, you get a Mickey and Friends Ultimate Birthday Celebration, which includes balloons, treats, cupcakes, party favors, a Pluto cuddly blanket, pool accessories, a Mickey birthday hat, and totes of all of the Fab Five characters. Wow. Filled with all of those things. Oh, my gosh. Crazy town. Wow. That actually, when I think about all those things that they're giving you, $550 seems right on track with what that would cost. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I did not get that for you for your birthday. Hmm. I got you a cup of coffee. Yeah, it's good, but it's no tote. <laughs> <laughs> totes. It's totes, not a tote. It's totes, not a tote. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's a really fun way to celebrate. My husband, my sweet husband, sent me a cookie package after my first run Disney half marathon. Oh, that's that so sweet. That was sweet. waiting for me in the room after the run. Yeah. Super fun. Did you just go to town on those cookies? Were they gone in a minute? I wrecked them. Aww. It was like a bear got into them. <laughs> <laughs> Another way you could celebrate in Walt Disney World, and this is kind of expanding on my initial offering, Mm. is to plan an evening of events, right? And one way that's really easy to do that is to reserve an experience that we talked about on last week's episode, Mm -hmm. which just happened to pop back into my mind, which is the signature celebration package at Cinderella's Royal Table. So you get dinner, right, in Cinderella Castle. You get to see happily ever after fireworks from a special viewing area. You get the dessert party after that. Mm -hmm. And that whole experience, as a reminder, costs $199 for adults and $169 for children. 
It sounds super fun, though. It does sound super fun. And again, it's an entire evening, right? So you think about dinner and a dessert party and the special viewing. Yeah, you never have to go, what are we going to do next? Because you have like three or four hours of events to do. Yeah. Super fun. Good idea. Yeah. I'm glad you thought of it. (laughs) Did I? (laughs) No. No. Along those lines, I'm going to throw out there, take one of the Disney cruises. And I don't mean the cruise ships. I mean, in the parks, they have these boats and yachts. Some of them are yachts that you can book with just you and your friends and family. Yes. And you can see the fireworks at night on a boat. How fun would that be? This is one you could get me, Patrick, and I would not be mad about it. Oh, for sure. This is an experience I would love to have. I'm surprised we haven't done it yet. I know. And it's affordable when you break it down by cost per person. Yeah. I'm going to throw this out there. Okay. If we can get some listeners to do a meetup oh. for gay days, oh. maybe we can all go in on a little a, a little boat experience and watch the fireworks. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be amazing. Yeah. We'll, we'll play who can stay on the boat the longest. Okay, Patrick, you're planning that. Okay, great. <laughs> so there's quite a few options that you can do on yes. these boats. Should we talk about some of them? Let's do. So there's, of course, the private fireworks cruise at Epcot or Magic Kingdom, mm-hmm. which includes assorted snacks and soft drinks. You can get banners or balloons, which are included in the price. With, say, like, happy birthday or I'm celebrating an engagement or whatever you want to do. And you can purchase dining add-ons if you want to plus up that experience. Yeah. The pricing is two ninety nine for an eight person pontoon. Yes. Three forty nine for a ten person boat or yikes, three ninety nine per hour for an eighteen person yacht, which you can add a butler to your I love, experience. I love that they include that. Yeah. Like it's or it's seventeen people and a butler yeah. if you want that. A hundred percent. And I do want that. Let's be clear about it. I don't want to stand up once. I honestly think the 21 foot pontoon that starts at 299 plus tax for eight people. Oh yeah. Is a great deal. That's a steal. To have that experience, I in my mind I'm imagining illuminations. I want illuminations. Right. When you kind of pull into that world showcase area and just sit on your pontoon and watch the fireworks. And not a lot of people choose that one. I I see boats all the time for the Magic Kingdom, sure. but I rarely see a boat watching illuminations. Aside from celebrating something in Walt Disney World, that would be a great way to say goodbye to Illuminations if that was your last viewing experience of the spectacular. Absolutely, absolutely. Another one is the Fairy Tale Fireworks Cruise at the mm-hmm. Magic Kingdom, which is $99 for adults or $69 for children 3 to 9. Now, this is not a private boat. This is one of the bigger boats that sure. you will be on with other people. Tax and gratuity is included in that price, though, and you get desserts, snacks, and beverages, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's actually a really good price for yeah. that. And then lastly, there are day cruises around Epcot from the Yacht Club, that's where that one starts, and they can be enjoyed for $149 plus tax for a party of up to 10 people, and pricing is subject to change. I'm not sure why during the day it's subject to change, but it is. Maybe on holidays they change the pricing around a little bit. Sure, sure. And that is just during the day. So if you're looking for something just to like see the property up close and personal, then that's the one for you. You know, I was just thinking, wouldn't this be a great way to celebrate with a smaller wedding party? Like if you went to Disney World and got married and had a smaller wedding party, you could do one of these excursions, either fireworks or not, mm-hmm. and kind of have it be either a pre-reception event or something like that. That'd be great. That's a really good idea. You get some great photos. Yes. Love it. Good idea. Another fun way you can celebrate in Walt Disney World, Patrick. Yes. How about taking advantage of one of those special ticketed events? Ooh, of course. I mean, come on. Yeah. Disney After Hours. Uh-huh. Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. Absolutely. Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. I want to do that so bad. You're going to. Okay. Those are just a great way to experience the parks under different circumstances. Yeah, it's a very special and unique experience that you don't get otherwise mm-hmm. unless you have that plussed up ticket. And they're so fun, the the, the special parades and the special mm-hmm. stage show. And I always imagine that it's just for me. Oh, but I always imagine that Disney World itself is just for me, uh-huh. obviously. Uh huh. And outside of Disney World, does that... It carries over. Yeah, I thought so. It carries over. Seems this, like This it. podcast is just for me. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I might be the only one listening to it, so it might, in fact, be just for me. Here's one that I stumbled across that I think we absolutely need to do. Okay. Amaret's cake decorating. Oh. Uh. 
in Disney Springs. Yes. So they have that beautiful pastry shop in yes. Disney Springs. Such delicious pastries. Mm-hmm. For $149 for you or you and a friend, you can decorate one of those beautiful dome cakes mm-hmm. and they'll teach you how to do it. Yeah. You get to keep the cake to take with you and they give you drinks while you're doing it. Do you think it'd be bad form if I just started eating the cake immediately after I finished it? You paid, man. You're right. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> whatever you want. I really want to learn how to do that. I'll never do it in real life, probably, but it'd be so fun. It looks so soothing to like smooth that oh, yeah. that glazed yeah. frosting on the cakes. I bet you will do it in real life. Now that you're an annual pass holder, I bet yeah. you're going to be taking advantage of these experiences that aren't so common. I think so. And yeah. a lot of them, you do get a discount for being an annual pass holder. Oh, even more of a reason to do Why it. Why would I not do yeah, that? Absolutely. And I don't need a whole cake to myself, but I will eat a whole cake sure. by myself. Sure. But I want you to decorate it with me to split the cost. Okay. But I'll be eating the cake. Oh, this seems like a bad happy deal. birthday! <laughs> happy birthday! Along those same lines, you can also get a Mickey Mouse celebration cake. Did you know about this, Patrick? I did not know about this. So these are available in decadent chocolate or sweet white chocolate. <laughs> oh my! The Mickey shaped cakes include a message of happy birthday or congratulations on the chocolate ears, or you can leave them blank. Each cake serves four to six guests, and they cost thirty five dollars plus tax and gratuity where applicable. That is so reasonable. Yeah, and advance payment is not required with confirmed restaurant reservations. So basically, what you can do is when you have have a reservation at a restaurant you want to kind of make it a more special experience yeah you can request one of these cakes for your dinner and the celebration cakes will be able to be added to a new or existing dining reservation by calling 407 wdw dine or by inquiring in person at a walt disney world restaurant concierge desk or restaurant podium and sometimes, Patrick, they can even do it day of, although quantities will be limited. So basically, if you want to enhance your dining experience or have a special dessert that's not on the restaurant menu, you can request one of these cakes. That'd be a really nice surprise for whoever you're with that they're celebrating your birthday. Yeah. And didn't know a cake was coming at the end of it. Absolutely. Love it. And I think there's even more options for you. Like, for instance, at Amaretz, mm-hmm. you know, you can request one of those and have that brought to the restaurant you're dining at, too. There's oh. a whole list of restaurants in Walt Disney World where you have this option where you can have specialty cakes brought in from different areas around the park. That's something that Disney does really well that people don't often take advantage of is just their concierge service in general throughout the parks and resorts. You can request almost anything to happen (laughs) at Disney. Yeah. Like if you want these special chicken nuggets that are only at this one place, but you're going to eat over here, they will oftentimes make that happen for you. Just be nice about it, people. Yeah, just scream a little less (laughs) at them. One less slap in the face. Yep. I'm going to throw a generic one at you. Please do. But I think it's super fun, is the monorail crawl. Oh, yeah. It's a great way to celebrate with your friends. It's a great way. It's a very low-key way to celebrate. And there's no, like, time crunch. No. Like, you're not on a schedule, right? Nobody's driving. Yeah. You're just keeping it cash. I will say, if you're going to do this, folks, take it easy, though. Yeah. I've seen some monorail crawls happen that I'm just like, I want you to crawl off a cliff. It shouldn't be a literal crawl. (laughs) Like, you should not be on all fours. That's true. To make it anywhere. Let's be clear. It happens sometimes. It's not. But just don't scream and ruin everyone else's experience. Right. Wise words. Thank you so much. How about celebrating in Walt Disney World by upgrading your resort? I was just going to say that. Upgrade. Upgrades. I've done this a couple of times. You have. The first time I took my boyfriend Matthew down to Walt Disney World, I surprised him with a resort upgrade. So lovely. So you were staying where first? I told him we were staying at Port Orleans. Yeah. And then halfway through the trip, I was like, and now we're going to Beach Club. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you upgraded from Port Orleans to another one. I know. Port Orleans is the upgrade for me. (laughs) I'm an all-stars kind of gal. Well, this was back when there was a quieter time in Walt Disney World. Yeah. And deals were to be had. For sure. And it was our first trip, so I made it a little bit special. But yeah. Did they move your luggage for you or did you do it? We did it ourselves. Okay. But they will move your luggage for you if you want. I was going to say, I bet they will. Yeah. I would even add to that... If you're staying there for, let's say, five days, Mm -hmm. just make one of those days even a Grand Floridian night. Yeah, why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can, like you said, you can have them take some luggage, whatever you want for you, Mm -hmm. and then just go back to your other resort the next day. Or make your last night there Grand Floridian. Make your last night there or your first night there and then downgrade. No, don't do that. Don't do that. (laughs) That sounds Uh, terrible. So your first night is Grand Floridian. Yeah. And then the rest of your trip is All-Star Sports? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's exactly... What it's going to be. Not that there's anything wrong with all-star sports. Nothing at all. Yes. And maybe while you're 
at the Grand Floridian for that first night. Yes. Get a spa treatment. Get a spa Celebrate treatment. Celebrate with a spa treatment. I've heard the, the spa treatment there specifically is second to none. Like a facial? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they have facials there? <laughs> <laughs> I need you to stop saying facial. Okay, okay. But they do. They have facials. You can get a massage. You can get a massage. Yeah. Which might end in a facial. <laughs> no, Patrick. What? I set you up for that. Thank you so much. <laughs> There are also spas at Coronado Springs, the Dolphin, Saratoga Springs, Disney's Yacht Club, and Animal Kingdom Lodge. So plenty of spa options. Spoptions. Spoptions. Yeah, you can get your hooves done at Animal Kingdom Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one that I really want to do, mm-hmm. and I think that we need to make this happen as well. Get a cabin for you and your friends oh, at Fort Wilderness. I really, I was just thinking about this yesterday. How much fun would that be? Yeah, yeah. They sleep up to six people, but let's be clear. We can fit 12 to 14 in there, can't we? <laughs> We're not fancy. Do we even know 12 to 14 people? I will meet people. Okay. It'll be a cabin in the woods experience. All right. Remember Gay that Day, movie? Gay Days just got interesting. I do remember that movie. Gay Days got a little crazy. Will we meet some lumberjacks at Fort Wilderness? We can invite back into the cabin? Um. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. At Fort Wilderness as well are so many things to do. There's the hoop to do review. Oh, Patrick. I know. I haven't seen it yet. It's so fun. I can't wait. Yeah. We're doing it. There's the Chippendale Campfire Sing Along. So there's a little um, a guitar player mm-hmm. that's doing some campfire songs. Chip and Dale are there. And then it ends with a movie. Cute. Super cute. There's horse carriage rides. Yes. They also have those at Port Orleans, too. Do they really? Yes. Nice. There's pony rides for the kids. You can rent a golf cart to get around the the property yes and if you go during halloween and or christmas people go bonkers decorating their cabins and they actually give out little maps of like where you should go to find all the fun decorated cabins and they have a parade of decorated golf carts oh fun yes i did not know that yes there's also a couple of great spots that you can drive your golf cart up to to watch the fireworks at night and they pipe in the music so you can hear it too we do need to stay at fort wilderness i don't know why we haven't done this yet i know it's really not that expensive especially if you're going with four to five people yeah super affordable okay we're doing it all right Despite what I said opening this segment about starting small and going grander and grander, <laughs> I'm pulling it way back now and going small. Oh. This is an idea I found that I would really, really love. Uh-huh. So if you want a memento from your trip, your celebratory Walt Disney World trip, yeah. and you don't want to spend a ton of money, mm-hmm. buy two cards, like two birthday cards or two anniversary cards oh. or two wedding cards, sure, and have the characters sign the inside of one. And then take the cover from the other and like frame it when you get home. So you have the cover of the card. Yeah. And then you have the inside of the card with all of the characters' signatures from the meet and greets that you attended. That's a very clever idea. Cute. Well done, you. Yeah. Small idea, but affordable mm-hmm. and a way to kind of memorialize your trip. And if you want to take it a step further, yes. mail it to yourself from the Magic Kingdom. Patrick, you have outdone yourself. I'm a genius. Yes. Because then you get to continue your trip when you get home from your vacation. Absolutely. I love it. And then you could even frame the envelope because don't they stamp it like Walt Disney World or like Magic Kingdom? I'm assuming they do from the post office there. They do, I think, if you go to the post office to get it postmarked. Yeah. Yeah. Cute. Cute. Another option for people choosing to celebrate in Walt Disney World could be a specialty tour. Right. Oh, of course. Patrick, you just did the Rhino Tour in I Animal did. Kingdom. I did. That was one of the best things I've done for myself. And so affordable. So affordable. And you can sort of tailor this to whoever you're celebrating with. Yeah. Like if you're celebrating someone's birthday who's maybe sort of a history buff, take one of the behind the scenes of the Magic Kingdom Tour yes. and they'll get, get you get the full history of how the Magic Kingdom came to be. When I was researching this on the Walt Disney World website, there are so so many tours. There's a lot. And some are super affordable, like Behind the Seeds at Epcot is $25, Patrick. I'm often behind some seeds. Are you? Yeah. I don't get it, but Great. I'm going to go with you on that journey. Don't worry about it. <laughs> There's also the Backstage Magic Tour. There's Caring for Giants, Keys to the Kingdom. Now, Caring for Giants, that's that's about me, right? Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think you're confusing that with Caring for Littles. Oh, <laughs> Caring for pumpkins. Oh, little pumpkin. <laughs> I didn't realize this, Patrick, but did you know there's several Epcot Seas tours and where you actually get to dive into the tank? I did know that. There's several versions of that. Yeah, I've seen people do it and it looks super fun. It's not just for Uncle Jesse and Joey <laughs> recording their radio show. Anyone can do it. You need to stop watching Full House. <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> And obviously the ultimate version of this Mm -hmm. tour experience would be the World of Dreams Ultimate VIP Tour, which, Patrick, I'm going to request that you gift me 
which, as you all know, is the twelve thousand dollar <laughs> tour for one day. I can't even hear that number without laughing at Can it. Can you just let me get through this because uh, it becomes more reasonable as you listen to the offerings? Okay, okay. okay. Twelve thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. You can bring up to six guests. It's twelve hours long, so it's a thousand dollars an hour. <laughs> You get two VIP tour guides. You get a tour of the Cinderella Castle Dream Suite, and all meals and alcohol are included, Patrick. Now, <laughs> when I put all of that before you, doesn't it seem more reasonable that you should possibly give that to someone for their 40th birthday, a milestone birthday, Patrick? Yeah, I would need to find someone I care $12,000 worth in my life. Uh, I only have about $12. $12 of care. of care for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I can buy you two fudges. <laughs> you can pray on it. I'm not going to force you at this very instant to make a decision. I can see you're, you're processing what I just gave you. The wheels are turning. Good. The wheels are turning. Good. $12,000. And only six people can join? Only six people. Okay. Yeah. I don't know six people I care enough about. <laughs> $1,000 worth. <laughs> You can get more information of any of the tours that I mentioned by calling 407-WDW-TOUR or visiting DisneyWorld.com. And my last suggestion for mm -hmm. celebrating in Walt Disney World, Patrick, something you can get on board with. Okay. Shopping spree. I mean... Give someone a shopping spree. <laughs> Why not? Can I propose oh, this dear. as an add-on yeah. to the $12,000 tour? Yeah. What's that tour called again? It's called the World of Dreams Ultimate VIP Tour. Okay. So after that tour, yeah. I'm taking you on a shopping spree? Correct. Okay. All right. I'm picturing like a pretty woman <laughs> trying on clothes montage. Huge mistake. <laughs> that I'm picturing that? Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite lines during that scene is when they are actually doing the shopping. Yeah. And I can't remember the actor's name, but he goes, who ordered pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Makes me laugh every time. And in our scenario, the answer would be me. Yeah. Answer. The answer. <laughs> Do you think they added that line because of the movie Mystic Pizza? Oh, interesting. I just thought of that now. Oh, my gosh. You guys, Mystic Pizza and Pretty Woman are in the same cinematic universe. There was a one-second mashup. <laughs> wow. But back to say by the Bell. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Patrick, there are many, many ways you can kind of plus your Disney vacation by adding on celebratory experiences. So many. We haven't even scratched the surface of what Ouch. Disney has to yeah. offer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean your surface. Oh, okay. I mean the topic surface. Sure. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do any of these jump out to you as something that we should just do it? Just rip the Band-Aid off. $12,000 tour. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Can I just have it? I can't with you right now. <laughs> um, no, I think the Fort Wilderness Cabin idea is fantastic. Thank you so much. I would totally love to do that. Yeah. And the one that really stands out in my mind is something that I would truly love to do mm -hmm. would be a fireworks cruise. Yeah. And specifically for Epcot, for Illuminations. Wouldn't that be a nice way to end your trip? Oh my gosh, perfect. Yeah. Just a nice little button on the yes. end of your trip. Yeah. I love it. What ones stand out to you? Both of those, I think, are, yeah. are ones that I would do. And then the cake decorating yes. sounds super fun to me. Yeah. I really love baking. And so I think that would that would be right up my alley. You could take your cake that you yeah. baked earlier in the day uh -huh. on your fireworks cruise. You could. And just watch some fireworks and eat some cake. And then head back to the cabin. Yeah. This is a real pricey trip. <laughs> but I'm, I'm into it. Yeah. I've got the annual pass. You got it. It's on me. Oh, my gosh. And the $12,000 tour? Oh, boy. Sure, why not? Can I remind you at this point that if you add on a day, it's only $10,000 after that. That's true. Okay, that's so true. you'd be losing money if you didn't yeah. do the second day. This scenario, much like our friendship, is all hypothetical, so <laughs> oh, I'm just, no. <laughs> just going to say yes to all of it. <laughs> Well, we would love to hear any ideas that you have of how you can celebrate in Walt Disney World. Mm -hmm. You can email us those ideas at info at gazedothed.com. Or you can reach out to us on social media at GDTD Podcast. I'm excited to learn how people are going to celebrate us while they're in the park. <laughs> oh, us? That's what that means, right? <laughs> yes, how they celebrate you and me. Yeah. Is there a popcorn crawl? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That would be right up your alley. I sometimes crawl home because of the amount of popcorn mm -hmm. that I've eaten. Yeah. That sounds delightful. A popcorn and fudge crawl. Mm. Maybe that's our band name. Popcorn and fudge? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now appearing to the left of the American Pavilion. Yes. <laughs> popcorn and fudge. Featuring boys to men. <laughs> <laughs> They're sort of our background music yeah. that we're going to change the lyrics to. So yeah. while they're performing, yeah. Popcorn and Fudge is performing <laughs> just to the left. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's our first single, To the Left. 
Hey, Adam. Hey, Patrick. Guess what time it is. It's time for some quick D. Quick D, quick D. D-faced. D-faced. <laughs> Coming at ya. <laughs> <laughs> Featuring popcorn and fudge. Yes. You're correct. It is quick D time. Yes. Hit me with a quick D. <laughs> We're all over the place today, musically speaking. It's true. You can't contain our talent. <laughs> yep, that's, that's our other single, All Over the Map. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, Quick D is when Adam and I ask each other a question that we've not been privy to previous to this recording. Lordy. <laughs> that was my Dame Maggie Smith. Oh, okay. Coming into that D. Work on it a little bit, maybe. Rude. <laughs> Rude. Just because it's your birthday, yeah, doesn't mean you get to. It does. It means I you can get do whatever I want and say whatever I want to you. That's fair. That's fair. So who's kicking us off? I'm going to kick us off. Kick me in the D. <laughs> <laughs> that would be painful. You're my friend. I will not do that to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So Patrick, last week Disney announced the lineup for their upcoming films. Right, like into 2027. Right, it was like so many films. It yeah. was like the Disney Fox films, really. Now, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it included Star Wars and Avatar and all that business. Yeah, man. And on their lineup is Jungle Cruise, Word. which is coming out, I believe, next year in 2020. Fun, fun, fun. And so, Patrick, my yeah. question to you is, uh-huh. after Jungle Cruise, <laughs> yeah. what should be the next Disney ride to movie film? Ooh. What's the next ride that's going to be made into a film? I think it seems clear that they're making the people mover (laughs) into a full length. Interesting. Drama. Yes. The people mover. So mover may be more of a metaphor in this scenario. Yeah. I mean, also a a literal mover. Yeah. I'm assuming. What is the plot? (laughs) I think it seems obvious. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) It's, It's a real... Um, meet cute situation. Okay, where two people meet on the people mover. Okay, but they realize once the ride starts that their trains aren't connecting. Oh no! And so one takes off. Oh dear! And the other one stays where they are. Oh no! And they never see each other again. Okay, until five minutes later, <laughs> <laughs> when they get off the people mover. Wow! And see each other. Those five minutes, though, are filled with drama. It's a three-hour movie. The stakes are high? Every second is one hour. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Of their life. All right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's a musical. Oh. (laughs) It is? Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the song titles from People Mover? I Won't Be Moved is the opening so someone clearly is just not having it. They're not having it. They're having a terrible day at yeah. Walt Disney World. Yeah. Two people, in fact. Okay. They're just grumpy gusses. Yep. And they they have this opening number called I Won't Be Moved. Okay, great. In which they're like, I'm never going to find love. Right. Why am I even here? Right. Can you pass the fudge? I'm s- <laughs> <laughs> sad you didn't sing those lines, but okay. <laughs> it's spoken. It's a spoken song. Oh, okay. It's a patter song. It really is. <laughs> it really is. It's like a Rex Harrison performance from My Fair Lady. Yep. Okay. Yep. Got it. Um, and then it moves on into why is it so dark? Whose hand is that? Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> is this based off of actual experiences you've had on the People Mover? You know what? I can't answer that without being sued. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> names have been changed, sure, <laughs> to protect the innocent. Yep. Meaning me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, what else do you want to know about this movie? I mean, it seems, it seems really clear, right? It does. Your elevator pitch is on point. (laughs) I am definitely investing in this, in this movie. Yeah, you should. I'm a producer now. (laughs) Is there a character named Tom Morrow in the film? (laughs) There is. Okay. It's, uh, it's also a tap number. Tom Morrow. Paging Mr. Morrow. Oh, Paging Mr. Morrow. Fantastic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what is the big finale number called? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's called... Let's people move in together. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right? I like how it ends on a positive note. It really does. It began on kind of a sour note. Yeah. It's it's a drama. It's a musical. It's a love story. Mm. People mover. When can we expect it in theaters? 2022. Okay. Soon. Yeah. We're in pre-casting right now. Okay. My couch is available. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Is is ready for a screen test. All right. Okay. (laughs) 
Are you excited for this? Sign a waiver before you take that screen test. <laughs> Names will not be changed for that screen test. Be tested after you take that screen oh, test. Oh, no. <laughs> How very dare you. Just kidding. Use protection, it's, everyone. It's probably a good idea. Yeah. Let's move on to your D, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, Adam, I have a surprise for you. Yes? You have been gifted the VIP oh. ultimate experience mm -hmm. for your birthday. I sure have. In Disney World. I sure have. What on earth are you going to do with this experience? Mm -hmm. Who are you inviting? Mm -hmm. What are you eating and drinking? Okay. So, I'm going to start with who am I inviting? Yes. Okay. I'm going to invite... Uh, your husband, Dan. Great. My boyfriend, Matthew. Perfect. Myself, obviously. You can invite yourself. So there's three other people because it's six, right? Yep. Okay. Then I'm going to do, let's see, I'll invite my friends, Paul and Bart. Great. And then I'll invite you. You just made the cut. I'm unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> so it's six gay dudes tearing it up around Walt Disney World. Perfect. Should you decide you want to attend? I know you have other obligations. Can I bring Donald? It said people and not ducks. So I'm assuming that's okay. Great. Yeah. All right. Donald's coming too. Mm -hmm. So now I need to tell you what I'm going to do and what I'm going to eat and drink. Yeah. On your very important D <laughs> party. So we can make requests, right? Like we can kind of pitch ideas and Disney can see what they're going, what they can kind of make happen. Right. I know, yeah. you, I know you can get a reservation anywhere on property. Anywhere on property. And you can request kind of out there things too. And they will try to make it happen if they can. Do you know what I'd love to do? Tell me. This won't really be a surprise, but. I would love just the six of us to be able to ride Haunted Mansion with just the six of us. Ooh. So like two people and then you and Dan and Donald mm -hmm. in Doom Buggies mm -hmm. next to each other. And it's just us going through. Wouldn't that be kind of eerie? That would be, that would be really eerie. Haunted Mansion. Yeah, for sure. That'd be fun. I'd want to do it actually by myself one time. Oh, <laughs> yes. Wouldn't that be weird? That'd be awesome. I love that idea. Yeah. I think you can make that happen. Okay. It'd have to be after hours, but why not? Or before, like they'd be the very first thing we do. Park open. In the day. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I want them to shut it down. I want there to be a huge line outside of Haunted Mansion, <laughs> and I want them to shut it down so we can walk right past and have the experience all to ourselves. I like that idea. Just squeezing through. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Next up, I'd like to do shots of the water from It's a Small World. <laughs> yep. Why would you want to do that? Because I want that Disney inside of me. I want that Disney experience inside of me. You want that D in you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of do that on Splash Mountain if you just open your mouth at the end of the ride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oof, it's a lot. But I find that the water in It's a Small World is more contained and like more just, I feel like, recycled. Yeah. It's just been there. It's yeah. been there. It's contained and contaminated. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're doing shots of it. <laughs> Great. You probably could get drunk off of that. Yeah. Who knows what's in it? I'd like to walk through Peter Pan's flight, not oh. be in a ship, but be on the ground level walking through it and pretending I'm a giant. Yeah. Yeah. Just step all over London. But while people are still riding it so I can ruin their <laughs> ride experience. <laughs> of course you've turned this into a how can I wreck someone else's day well why not with my money <laughs> yeah I mean it's your money to be fair you're giving me the twelve thousand dollars right ooh okay okay well I'll, I'll find it somehow all right mm -hmm. next up I'd yeah. like to be in the center of the globe in <laughs> illuminations at Epcot <laughs> You're going to catch on fire, man. Yeah. Okay. That's Rip how it. you end it. That's, that's how you end your trip. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Patrick, is anything going to get better than spending $12,000 in Disney World? Of someone else's money? I might as well just end it right after that. Yeah. One short day <laughs> <laughs> in the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. I'm going to request that they fix the Yeti on Expedition Everest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that will happen. Yeah. But hey, $12,000. Just call Joe. It buys you a Ready Yeti. Oh, ooh, I like that. Thank you. Get Ready Yeti. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I suppose I should do something in Hollywood Studios, right? Yeah. I like that you used your powers for good. Well, mostly, except for the giant Finally. thing. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I mean, just for that oh, one. Oh, just for the Yeti. Just for that one, yeah. one short minute. Yeah. Well, I like to put that out into the universe. That's right. And then I get it back as a giant in Peter Pan's flight. Yeah. So we're at Hollywood Studios now. Yes, we okay. are at Hollywood Studios. What are we ruining over there? No, come on. <laughs> I want to have dinner in the lobby of the Tower of Terror. Ooh. So in the Hollywood Tower Hotel, I want to have dinner with the six of us in that lobby. I like the way you think. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's kind of an intimate experience. What are they, what are they bringing in for us? Fudge. <laughs> 
A lot just of fudge. A, just a fudge dinner. A lot of fudge. Okay. I'll, some popcorn for you. You did pay $12,000 for this, so you can have some pop secret. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Generosity. Yeah. You are. Yeah. You are living that life. And I think at any given moment of the day, I want our two VIP tour guides to have those kind of like horn-like flasks oh, at their sides. Yeah. And we can just say like, flask me, and they'll like pick up their horns and like shoot some alcohol into our mouths. Mm-hmm. So like, just to keep keep the day. Yeah. They're clearly hot dudes, right? Loose and goosey. Oh, so that's a great point, Patrick. In short shorts. What? Short shorts? And yeah. what if they had the plaid vest but no shirt underneath? So like their rippling biceps would be popping? Yeah. I like that. I like that. That's a great idea, Patrick. Thank you so much. Hey. Hey, tour guide, flask me. But his name is Brick. Brick. There's, there's Brick and Chance. Hey, Chance Brick. is the other one, yeah. Flask me, Brick. Yeah. Flask me so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I lost the thread there for a second. <laughs> Brick is questioning. You know, he's curious. Yeah, he won't be after this tour. Oh. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And should I survive the fire globe and illuminations? <laughs> you will. Okay, thank you. It includes a fire suit. Oh, does it? Yeah. It better be flattering, because if it's not flattering, I'm not going to wear it. It's form-fitting couture. Okay. Yeah. And to close out the day. Yeah, something extravagant. Yes. Okay. Per most of our trips, uh, yeah. you know, included as part of this tour is a tour of the Cinderella suite in Ooh, Cinderella Castle. Mm-hmm. And so the six of us will take the tour. Yeah. And then we'll order Domino's. <laughs> It'll be delicious. Wow. But I want to be in the tub eating Domino's. <laughs> Having it fed to you by brick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brick another another slice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's sexier than being in Cinderella Suite yeah. in a tub, <laughs> having a VIP tour guide feed you Domino's pizza? Thin crust, Thin might crust. I add, because Thin crust. I, I don't need those extra calories. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Or carbs. Yeah, keeping it classy yeah. and sassy yeah. all day long. I hope you'll join me on this tour. I know you're not completely sold on it yet, but... Yeah. I'll join you for most of it. I can't. I can't say I'll be there for the tub experience. Oh, <laughs> I can't. I don't know. I like you a lot. Yeah. It ends at some point, though. Oh, okay. And it's at the tub. Did I cross a line <laughs> with pizza? <laughs> <laughs> That will do it for this episode of Gays Do the D. Thanks for listening. Ratings and reviews are greatly appreciated and help people find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. To become a patron of the podcast, visit our website at gaysdothed.com slash donate. For a donation of any amount, you can receive exclusive Gays Do the D content and help us continue to bring you the very best Disney news and discussion. Continue the conversation after this episode on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at GDTD Podcast. Submit your questions or show ideas to info at gaysdothed.com. Have a great week, everybody. See you real soon. Gays Do the D.